Hi and welcome to a new tutorial from Airbrush One. I'm Lonnie Bush and if you followed the previous conveyor tutorial, you remember we randomized the candy colors. This time I'm going to show you how to assign exact colors across our clones, then imprint a logo. So let's get started. Let's get a cube and give it nine subdivisions by hitting nine, then tab. If you can't see the divisions, go up under display and set the garage shading to lines. Now hold down control and drag a copy. Then hold down shift in the deformers, grab the Spherify deformer. Let's pull out our cube with the deformer so we can see it better. Then go into the settings for the Spherify deformer and set the strength to 100%. And let's adjust the radius by eye. If we place it back in the cube by right clicking the two arrows on X, we can see the size relationship a little bit better. Okay. Let's adjust the radius down to uh, around uh, 114 or so. Then let's pull it back out. Make sure to grab the cube and not the deformer. That's not bad, but I'm going to adjust the radius a bit more, maybe around 124 or so. Okay, so let's convert our cube by selecting the cube and right-clicking, then come down and choose Current State to Object. Drag the new object down to the bottom here and turn all this other stuff off. Let's do a quick check of the UV mapping. Okay. I have my texture view dock, but you can access the texture view by going up to window, then come down to body paint 3D, then down to new texture view. Right now the UVs are stacked so that any graphic applied to the cube will be applied to all sides. We need to change that. So first let's turn all this stuff off and hide the spherify to farmer. Now go up under layout and come down to BP UV edit. Here's our texture window. Make sure the cube is selected. Right now we are still in polygon mode. We need to select UV polygons. Come over to the UV mapping tab and select projection. Under projection, click cubic 2. That gives us a nice open box mapping so that all six sides of the cube are separate. Go back up to layout and go back to startup layout. We are still in UV polygon mode, so go over and select model mode. Now if we go check our texture again, we'll see we now have the open box mapping. Okay, so let's drag a copy of our polygonal object and rename it Sphere. Then drag a copy of our Spherify deformer and place it beneath our polygonal sphere object. We need to use the fit to parent command so it deforms our sphere properly. Let's pull that out so we can see it better. Then go in and reset the Spherify to Farmer radius. 126 looks pretty good. Oops. Make sure to grab the object and not the Farmer. Then reset the radius to your liking. Okay. All right. 120 look. I guess 122 looks good to me, or 125 maybe. Yeah. Pull the sphere back out and let's check the texture map again. Okay, it's the same as it should be. Now select the sphere in the object manner, then right click and come down to current state to object. Let's grab our sphere with the deformer and put it near the top of the object manner out of the way. Then hide it and switch off the deformer. Let's check the UV mapping on our converted sphere. That looks good. Let's go up and grab a cloner. You may have to go up under MoGraph, down to Cloner, then drop our cube and sphere into it. Let's adjust the settings on our cloner. Zero out Y, then drag out X just so there is a separation, and then create 10 clones, 10, yeah. Now let's set the cloner parameter to blend, and you can already see our cube morphing to a sphere. Now we need our sphere to be more of the candy shape. Select the sphere, 
then hit the T key to select scale. Now scale it down only on Y until you get a nice shape, you know, for your candy. All right, that looks good. All right. Okay, so switch off the cloner so we only have our two objects. Let's adjust our axis. Enable axis and snapping. Open snapping and make sure snap to edge is enabled. Hit F4 to go into front mode. Pull the axis down on the cube until it snaps to the bottom edge. Now do the same with the sphere. Make sure to switch off the axis and snapping tools when you're done. Now select the sphere and right click on the two small arrows to zero out on Y on the sphere and the cube. Enable the cloner. Now everything is sitting on the ground plane where we need it. Let's select the cloner and change the clone count to 1. With the cloner selected, go up to MoGraph and come down to Effector and Plane. That will automatically apply the plane effector to our cloner. Go into the plane effector and deselect position. Then drag the modify clone slider to 100%. You can see how the plane effector animates between the different states. That's what we need. Now go to the fall off tab. From the shape drop down window choose linear. If I move this on X nothing will happen. But if I move it on Z, we can animate between the transformation between the cube and candy shape. So let's rotate the fall off 90 degrees. Now it works on Z, which is actually X. Using blend mode allows us to create an animation within our animation. If I pull this through slowly, you can see what I mean, how the cloner is being animated between these two object states. Let's clean up our scene a bit, switch off the plane effector for now, and click a null into the scene. Let's call it Build Null. Grab our cube and objects we are not using and put them under the Build Null. Copy the name, middle mouse click to select everything in the hierarchy, then right click and choose Add to New Layer. Go into the Layer tab and double click and paste the name. Turn off the eyeball, the render, and the object manager icons. Good. So let's go back to our cloner and set our count to 20. Um, all right, maybe let's set this to 25 to make sure we have enough. That looks better. Now select the cloner, right click and go down to current state to object. Turn the cloner off and hide it. Let's have a look at our clones. Select any clone and let's check the UV mapping. You can see Cinema has changed the mapping to the strange arc. And for our final candy shape, that's not going to work. Let's go back to BP UV Edit. Make sure you're in UV Polygon mode. Choose the first cube and go to the Projection tab and select Cubic 2. Cinema won't allow us to select all the objects and change at once, so I'm going to cut away to change these. So now we're back here, and you can see the UV mapping has changed throughout the clones, and that is just fine. On our final clone, we have a clear indication of the top and bottom and where our logo will need to be placed. I'm just going to go up and choose BP UV Edit to reset my windows. Okay, so with Sphere 24 selected, go up and select the Paint Setup Wizard. 
hit deselect all, then go down and find sphere 24 and activate it. Just leave these settings and hit next. Leave all this the same. I've chosen red. It can be anything. This can stay the same. Then hit finish and go ahead and close the window. You see we have our sphere texture optimized, meaning that it fills the texture window now. Still very clear where our logos go. And down here you can see the wizard has created a new texture for sphere 24. With paint, the paintbrush selected, draw crude C4D on the candy shape in the window. You see that it is also drawing in the texture window over the UV mapping. Let's go to the bottom view, frame up the red sphere, and draw the C4D logo again. You can see that the orientation for both logos is the same. Let's go back to our startup layout. And if we zoom around, we can see the logo on both the top and bottom of our candy shape. I'm going to save and we get this prompt. Just click yes. Go up to the layout and select BP UV edit again. Then come down and make sure Sphere 24 and the material are selected. Go over to the Layers tab and you'll see our texture there. We want to add this UV texture to our file. So go down to this icon at the bottom, the Create UV Mesh Layer, and click it. It's added, to the, it's added the UV layer now. So go ahead and save it. And yes. And let's go back to our startup layout. So now you can see Cinema has added the UV layer to our material. Go into the Color tab of our material and click Edit Image. Mine opens in Photoshop. I'm hoping you have some kind of image editing software. So let's grab the text tool. I'm going to default colors and foreground to white. Then type C4D or whatever you want. Mine is really small, so I'm just going to use the transform tool to enlarge and rotate. Then type C4D. Then position it in the general area of the scribble. Then I'll accept the transform. I'm going to drag a copy of the background and hit Command Delete to fill with black. Now I'm going to select my logo again and use the transform tool to adjust the size. Maybe a little smaller. Once you have it the way you want it, drag the logo to the new layer icon and make a copy. Then position it over the other UVs. Make any final adjustments you need to make and save it. Now turn off the UV layer and go up and save as a ping. I know you can select layers in Cinema, but I like having a flat copy. I'm just going to name it C4D Logo, maybe uh, C4D Candy Logo. That's good. Back in Cinema, select the material we made and just delete it. Now create a new material, just double click. Then just drag that new material right onto the icon with a question mark. And we can go ahead and like make this red or something, just so you can see it for now. So double click in the material window and create a new material and add it to sphere 24. 
Let's go into the new white material and in the color, make it like almost pure white or whatever you want. And then choose the alpha tab and activate it. In the alpha tab, go to the texture and select the image that we just made, the ping. In the editor tab, let's make the texture 1024 by 1024 so it's a bit sharper in the viewport. This doesn't affect render at all. Yeah, it looks better. We can see it better. Both sides looking good. Okay, so don't forget to save. I'm making this a bit brighter red even though we are not even using this red. What can I say? I can't stand to look at it. Okay, so let's get a new cloner, and we're just going to select all the clones by clicking the top one, then shift-clicking the bottom, and drag them into the cloner. Select the cloner and hit the S key. That way it'll center in the viewport. Let's go into the cloner settings. Set Y to 0. Then the clone count to 7. In the Clones drop-down menu, go down and select Sort. We want to stretch the clones out in Z. I'm going to make this 300. That looks pretty good for now. Let's just delete this null. Go up and add two nulls to our scene. In X, set the top one to minus 8,000. Then the bottom one to 8,000, positive 8,000 in X. Now select both of those nulls we just created and go down and change the display to cube. And we'll crank up the size a little bit so we can see these. Uh, yeah, they're pretty, pretty tiny. Let's change the null orientation to XZ and the radius to 30. That should help. We're going to align our clones along X using a spline so we can take advantage of the rate control in the cloner. So select both nulls. Let's make them a bit larger. Looks like I didn't change the orientation on the bottom one. So let's set both to XZ. Then just make the color red or green or whatever. So, okay. Now select both nulls. And then go up to MoGraph. Come down and grab a tracer. Go into the tracer and change tracing mode to connect all objects, uncheck trace vertices, and everything else looks good. Let's organize this a bit. Get a new null and name it tracer and nulls. Then let's drag the tracer and nulls into the new null we just created. It'll clean up the scene, the object manager a little bit, keep us a little more organized. Let's get another cloner and drag it below the tracer and nulls. Then make cloner 1 a child of cloner 2. Let's adjust the settings in cloner 2. Set mode to object. Then go up and drag the tracer into the object field. Let's align our clones. Go to the transform tab. And in H, let's make it 90 degrees. Alright, that looks good. Let's add some more rows. In the Object tab, come down to Count and put in 33. That's looking good. In the Distribution drop-down menu, select Even. And then let's go down and set the rate to 2.5 for now. If we hit Play, we can see how this is working. And it's uh, like infinite, infinite loop of clones, candy clones, eventually. Now, select Cloner 1, 
Then go up to MoGraph and grab a new plane effector. Go into the parameter tab and uncheck position. You can zero this out, but make sure you uncheck position. Like before, drag the modifying clone slider to 100%. So now it looks like the material has been applied to all the clones, but it really hasn't. What we're seeing is only our last clone displayed, the Sphere 24 clone with the material applied. So let's adjust the fall off on our plane effector like we did before. Make it linear. Right now it's only affecting this first row. All the white cubes represent the first clone, the cube. So go into the Attributes Manager to the Coordinates tab and change the heading to 90 degrees. Now you can see the break between the first clone and the last right at the point of fall off. Let's adjust the fall off by changing the size in Z to around 3000. Doesn't matter where the fall off is in X, only in Z. Now let's change the fall off to get a smoother transition between our clones. And 90% looks pretty good to me. Okay, so let's rename our plane effector to modify clone before we add any more effectors. And let's control drag that to make a copy. And we'll call this one scale clones. Then add both effectors to the tracer null. We need to select cloner one for the effector, go to the effector tab and add our scale clones effector beneath the modify clones effector. The order can matter in certain situations. Let's adjust the scale clones effector. Drag the modify clone slider back to zero. Then go up and activate scale, maybe somewhere around eight in Y. See what's happening here? Something isn't right. It should not affect the scale of our candy pieces. So go to the rotation parameter and let's set it to minus 90 degrees. Now everything is the way it should be. Let's change the fall off on the scale clones effector to maybe I don't, around 60. Now let's add some scale on Z and Y. I'm around 0.5, but whatever looks good to you. Now you can see that our beginning clones almost become a solid bar, then begin to separate, eventually turning into our candy. I think it looks pretty good. I want to adjust the spacing between the rows. So go to the bottom null in the Objects Manager and select it. Then just drag it in until we get a nice spacing to the pieces. Yeah, yep. um, that looks pretty good. We can always adjust it later. I want to add some extra candy pieces at the end so we have a few rows that are in their final transform state. So go to the bottom here and just control drag a few copies, uh, maybe five or so just to give our uh, some room and some time to add our logos. Yeah, oops. All right. All right, one more. Yeah, I think that'll do it. Now select all the red materials except for the one on the last clone and just go ahead and delete them. Now do the same with the logo materials. Um, leave the last one. Now you can see we have multiple finished candy shapes colored with logos. All right. 
and then we have some extra finished ones that don't even have the color on them yet. Now if you middle mouse click on Cloner 1, then come down to the Attributes Manager, you can see we now have 31 elements. So select Cloner 2, and let's add a couple of rows. Let's see, I've got 35 now. That should work. All right, so let's color our candy. Select the red material and go into the Color tab. And in the Texture window, go to MoGraph and then grab the Multi Shader. Click in the window to open up the Multi Shader. Here we can add more textures. We'll leave the mode set to Color Brightness. Then click the top texture arrow and go up to Color. And click on the window which opens the Color Picker. Choose Blue for our first one. Click this arrow to go back. Select the second texture window. Let's just make this green. All right, that looks good, almost. Yeah. When you're done, click the arrow to go back. Now we need to add more texture windows. I'm going to add six more for a total of eight. So go ahead and one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, let's click that. Follow the same procedure until we have all seven colors. Nice bright orange, maybe here. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right, that looks good. Go back. Let's do uh, red for this one. Yeah, that looks good. All right. And just click there and color. Uh, let's do that salmon color for this. And um, let's do the teal, kind of a bluish green. All right. And color. And this last one, well, it's not the last one, but the last of the colors, we want to do yellow candy colors. So... Uh, that looks pretty good. And so now, now this last one is our chocolate. So we want to get like a rich brown for this one. We have a dark, dark brown. Okay. And you can see that our um, that our last clone is being influenced by the by the last color. So let's color the rest of our clones by placing our candy color material on cloner one. Now all our clones are colored, influenced by the last color in our multi shader. Select cloner one and go up to MoGraph. Then under Effectors, grab a shader effector. All the clones have swelled because scale is on by default. Just click that off. Then leave everything as it is and go to the Fall Off tab. And set the shape to linear, then to the coordinates manager, and set the heading to 90 degrees. Nothing's really going to happen yet. Before we do the shading, let's further adjust the fall off. All right, that's looking, that's looking good. All right, so make this size on X around 200 and on Z uh, about the same for now. Maybe put Z up a little higher, maybe 230. Now let's go to the shading tab of the shader effector. In the shader field, let's add a gradient. Click the gradient to open its parameters. 
There we go. So we need nine of these color knots to direct the shader effector to influence the different colors of our multi shader. So hold down control and just click and drag until you have a total of nine color knots. You can see some of the clones changing as we put those in. So now right click in the center of the gradient bar and from the drop down menu just like that distribute knots that'll space them out evenly. Okay so select the first knot on the left then come down to HSV parameters and in V type in 10%. Select the second knot and type and set to V to 20%. Okay now the third knot make that 30%. The fourth knot, make that 40%. Uh, the fifth knot, make it 50%. Sixth knot, 60%. And the seventh knot, 70%. And then the eighth one, 80%. And then um, that last knot, you can just delete by dragging down on the knot. Okay. We now have something going on, but it's a bit wonky. So let's go to the Parameters tab and deselect Use Alpha Strength. Now we have all our colors and our chocolate color. And everything's looking pretty good, but we've got some duplicate yellows there. So we need to go fix that. So uh, let's do a quick render to make sure we're actually getting what we see. And that looks good. So let's make adjustments to our gradient to hit all our colors. Okay, so adjust the first knot a little to the right and the second knot until you see the colors come correctly there. And that's looking pretty good. Uh, we've got all our correct colors and our chocolate. Okay, now we can adjust our shader effector's position until we get the amount of colored clones we want. Let's right, see, it just moving this back and forth changes where the color happens. All right. If we hit play, we can see how it looks. I don't like how as soon as they turn to colors, the logo appears. So let's um, go in and adjust that. Uh, take one more look at it. Yeah, see those logos are coming on even before the colors change. We don't want that. Now the colors change and then the logo comes on. All right. I'm going to put in 900 frames so it doesn't keep looping back when we run it. Um, All right, let's try this again. Okay, so there's a little lag in there before between when they turn color and when the logo goes on. All right, so everything is looking pretty good. Let's pull the shader effector into the null and rename it to change color. So make the shader effector a child of the modify effector as well as the scales clone effector. That way you only have to move the modify clones effector and the relationship between the, uh, the effectors will stay the same and uh, it's a little easier to make adjustments, so if you want more colored candy at the front or less, it's a little easier. Let's hide the effectors. I set up this file so I could show you how the shader effector is affecting the multi-shader in our uh, material. So I've got our multi-shader open here that we created before and I've got the shader effector and you see right now all the clones are blue. If I go into the gradient you see I've removed all the knots and all I have is black. Okay, if we change this to, let's just do it here. 
If we change this to white, you're going to see these all turn brown. And the reason that they turn brown is because the white corresponds with the last color in our multi-shader. Um, and so if I go back and take the uh, return this to black, the black corresponds with the first color in our multi-shader. So as I pull different grays, you see that they correspond with each of these colors down the line in the multi-shader. And that's how the uh, shader effector works with the multi-shader with shades of gray. So here, let me uh, change these knots so there's no interpolation. Thing. So now you can see wherever there's black, you've got the blue, and then I've got a gray, so that's reading the yellow, the second to last color. And if I move this so that the shader effector is shader effector is not affecting it at all, we get the brown. Okay, we're back now. So go into the shader effector uh, into the fall off tab. I'm grabbing this tiny yellow dot and pulling the fall off out in Z. You can see it's over 900 centimeters now. Uh, let's pull it out to about 1400. Now let's reduce the fall off slider. Uh, yeah, maybe about 5%. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Now they're popping on kind of nicely. And I have, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. That looks good. And I have three rows that are colored before the logo comes on. I like that. All right. Well, that's about it. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. My next tut will be uh, the candy logo printer heads, how to time them to uh, the conveyor and how to attach independent wires. The wires weren't quite as easy as I thought they would be. Anyway, thanks for joining me. And until next time, take care.